Hey guys! So, I am finally making my birth, um, my birth story video. Um, it is February 15th, so Vivia is 12 days old. Yes, she's 12 days old, and yeah, she's almost two weeks old, and life has just been crazy not even because we have a newborn not even because we added a second child to our family um actually that's been pretty mm -hmm. easy just there's so many other things going on in our life that life has been crazy so as you can see aria's right here hi and what you can't see is vivia is laying beside me sleeping We'll see what happens. She may end up on me at some point. Who knows? But for now, she's sleeping beside me. And I'm really, really excited to share this story because it's crazy. We'll just say that. So, real quick, before I get started with Vivia's story, I'm just going to say that... I will take yours from an old I'm just going to say that um, for those who don't know, but some of you may already know this if you've watched my videos, Aria's birth was one that I have never ever come to terms with. Um, it was just not how I wanted it to be. A lot of things happened that I wasn't happy with. And yeah, she's sitting here, we can't see her face, but here's her hand. Um, I'm just never, I don't think I'm ever going to be at terms with it. Hi. It is what it is. <laughs> and I love my little Aria so much. And I, she's so healthy. And that's all Hi. I can be thankful for, you know. Like, I'm so thankful for that. And her birth and that doesn't really matter but in a way it does I'll never be happy with her labor and delivery her birth story okay please don't do that so let's get started with Vivia's birth story Vivia was born on February 3rd 2016 my due date was February 2nd and February 2nd came and went. Okay. On February 1st, it was a Monday, I went to the doctors. I saw one of the midwives that day and they checked me and did a membrane sweep. They said I was, she said she would not consider me a four that day. She would only consider me a three. But she said she could stretch me to a four, and she did the sweep. She told me that I would spot and probably have cramping, and it may or may not start contractions in labor. I had no spotting, which she pretty much told me I definitely would. I had no cramping. I had no contractions. Nothing. That was all of Monday, all of Tuesday. On Tuesday... I had my mom's fiance's niece, so she's kind of like my step cousin. Um, she had gone to the store and I had her pick up an outfit for me because I wanted an extra outfit to take to the hospital with me. And I couldn't get it locally and she was going um, to the closest like big shopping center to us. So she got it for me. I went to pick it up from her house and I met up with my mom. We went, we picked up the outfit and then we went out for supper. During supper, my mom and I were talking about um, Vivia's arrival and I just pretty much said I was expecting that I was going to have to have a, not, I was gonna have to be induced. I figured that the next week would come, I would still be pregnant and I would have to be induced and um, I just was coming to terms with the fact that I was going to have to be induced. I was like, hopefully it will be better this time around because 
I am already like a three or four centimeters dilated, so hopefully it will be easier and faster and everything like that. After dinner, my mom, Aria, and I, stop please, either sit up here with me or go over there, okay? After dinner, my mom, Aria, and I went to the mall. We wanted to go to Hallmark and um, a couple other stores at the, at the mall. And our local mall is really, really small. A lot of people call it the hall because it's like just a hall with a couple stores and it's tiny um but anyhow so we went to the mall and went to a couple stores we were walking around and i mean the mall is really small so we weren't doing a lot of walking but a little bit of walking no contractions at all that whole day no contractions so i put aria to bed that night and I was laying in bed, um, watching, uh, I think Pretty Little Liars on my phone. And I remember the last time I looked at my phone, it was one o'clock in the morning. And then I fell asleep. At 1.15, so we're on to February 3rd now. At 1.15 in the morning, I woke up having a contraction. Um, this has happened in the past, so I didn't think anything of it. I got up, like always, and went to the bathroom, like always. I had my contraction, it went away. I went back to the bedroom to lay back down. Before I got in bed, I had another contraction. <coughs> I got, I went back to the bathroom, and I decided to wait it out in there for a little bit, um, uh, before trying to go back to bed. I text Mike at this point because he's at work and I said of course I'm ready for bed and now I'm having contractions I was kind of annoyed um, I didn't think at this point that it was the real thing um yeah Mike didn't text me back I had another contraction another contraction another contraction I texted him two more times he still didn't text me back so around 1 40 I decided to call him and I just told him I was having contractions. I just really kind of wanted to talk to him. Um, when I told him I was having contractions, he was like, I'm coming home. And I was like, no, you only have to work for another hour. Um, it's, you, it's not necessary for you to come home. Um, I thought he was being ridiculous wanting to come home because he only had an hour left of work. And I wasn't even sure that it was the real thing at this point. So we argued back and forth a little bit about him coming home and finally I just said, fine, I'm going to get in the bath. So I started running the bath water and when I was pregnant with Aria, well, when I was in labor with Aria, I tried out the birthing tub at the hospital um, and I didn't like it at all. So I got in the tub and once again I did not like it at all. Um, Mike got home, he got home within like 15 minutes, which is really fast for him. Um, he, he came in, I was in the tub and I said, I need to get out of here. This isn't helping. So I got out and I said, I need to call the on-call now. So I called the on-call and they said to go ahead and come into the hospital. So then I had to call my mom. I called my mom, I said, you need to come down. She's like, did your water break? And I was like, no mom, you need to come down. She's like, what's wrong? What's going on? I said, mom, you need to come down. I'm going to the hospital. So she got ready, she came down. She was here probably about 2.30. And she, I was hanging out our back door getting fresh air and she that needs to turn down or you need to go over there please she asked if she should call 911 and I thought she was being ridiculous I said no we're going to the hospital so Mike and I got ready we went out to the car as I was getting into the car um I felt like I I said Either my water just broke or I just peed my pants. 
and I really wasn't sure. So, um, in the middle of my driveway, I took my pants off, and I sent Mike back into the house to get a towel. He got a towel, he brought it out, I put it in the car, I got in the car, and we headed to the hospital. Before we were even out of our town, because our local hospital does not have a maternity ward, um, the hospital I was going to was half hour away. So before we even got out of our town, I said, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the hospital. Um, back up a little bit. I was in the bathroom when Mike got home and I just kept saying, I don't know how I'm going to do this without an epidural or pain medication. I really don't want an epidural. I don't know how I'm going to do it without an epidural. So anyhow, fast forward back to where I just was. Um, Mike asked, do you want to go to our local hospital? Because, you know, in an emergency, they would deliver a baby. I said, no, just get going. So we're headed up over the mountain, and I'm just, like, praying out loud to God. You know, um, I'm just asking God to be with me, to um, just, you know, protect me, protect the baby, um, all that stuff. I was in so much pain. I was like, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I just kept saying, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Uh, I, I was, I was very, very scared. You know, I had already had a baby before, but it's still a really scary thing having a baby. So, um, I was scared and we're headed up over the mountain. I'm in so much pain. I'm literally screaming as we're driving down the one road um i'm screaming in pain i have the window rolled down luckily we had a blanket in the back of the car um because i always keep a blanket back there for aria so i had that blanket draped over me but i had my window down i'm like screaming out the window praying to god and then i just remember i'm like i have to I feel like I said I feel like I have to push I'm not gonna make it to the hospital at this point I didn't really know you know what was going on by knew that I was having a baby that night between between that point and getting into town I don't remember anything it was like a total blackout I just don't remember it um as we got into town there's a convenience store and there's an EMT station that sits beside the convenience wow. store. And I remember thinking to myself, maybe we should stop there. But I just thought it and I was like, we're almost to the hospital. I'm going to be okay. There was a cop driving by us. Mike wasn't wearing a seatbelt. So he starts worrying about putting a seatbelt on. I didn't have my seatbelt on either. And I always wear my seatbelt. I just couldn't wear my seatbelt. He's throwing his seatbelt on. And I'm like, Mike. Don't worry about your seatbelt. Get to the hospital. If that cop tries to pull us over, you don't stop. Do not stop. I said, when we get there, he will understand. So we're driving through town, and I'm like, give me my phone. Mike gives me my phone, and I turn on selfie mode, and I'm trying to see what is going on down there. Basically, I was like, something is coming out of me I wanted to make sure it was her head um so I I ended up just throwing my phone on the floor because I'm just in so much pain we're about two blocks from the hospital and I look at Mike and I say Mike you need to pull over right now and help me deliver this baby Mike says what no I can't do that we're almost there and I'm like I'm not gonna make it and literally we were almost there I said I'm not gonna make it to the hospital and if I do I'm not gonna be able to walk into that hospital I started pushing I'm reaching my hands down there and pulling her out as we pulled into the hospital parking lot I delivered the rest of her pulled her out pulled her up you know I delivered my baby in the car I made sure her cord wasn't wrapped around her neck and she was I, I was trying to make sure she was okay. I wrapped her in the blanket that I was covered with. Mike parks the car. He runs into the emergency room. He tells them, my wife just had a baby in the car. They all come out. They clamp her cord. They cut it. Mike didn't even get to cut the cord, which makes me a little sad, but not too sad because 
this whole experience was just so crazy and so amazing. Um, they take her up to maternity. They get me out of the car. They take me up to maternity, take me to my room. Mike parks the car and he comes up. Um, I didn't see any of my doctors. I didn't see... The office I go to has two doctors and two midwives. And the doctor was on call. She did not come in to see me. Um, none of them from that office came in to see me. And I'll talk more about all that in another video. I just mainly wanted to make this my birth video. So there was a doctor at the hospital who was on call and she was there. So she came into my room and helped me deliver the placenta. Um, they had Vivia in the nursery doing whatever, cleaning her up, doing her Apgar, um, right? That's what it's called, I think. Now I'm second guessing that. Um, then they brought her into my room within, I mean, I had her, we're saying it was at 3.05. They had her into my room by probably, by probably 3.15, 3.20, I want to say. And I started nursing her skin to skin, you know, and she's great. She weighed 7 pounds, 14 ounces, was 20 inches long, and healthy. So, that is my crazy, crazy, crazy birth experience. It was so crazy. It was so amazing. I am in love with my birth story from Vivia. Maybe that makes up a little bit for being so bitter over Aria's, but not really. I had with Vivia a completely unmedicated, unassisted car birth, and it's the craziest thing I've ever, ever, ever experienced, but the most amazing thing. Every time I talk about it, I get a little emotional just because it was the most... See, I'm going to cry. It was the most amazing thing I've ever, ever done. And all I can say is our bodies are amazing. Our bodies know what they're doing. And it was amazing just to listen to my body and do what I needed to do. My entire labor and delivery was less than two hours. My first contraction was around 1.15 in the morning and I had her at 3.05-ish. So, whoo, crazy, 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 but it was so amazing and I wouldn't want it any other way. I honestly kind of fear if I have any more kids. I kind of fear birth with them because I just, I don't know that I could have a birth as amazing as Vivian's. I had no tearing with her, um, I was up walking, I got a shower, um, I, w I did great, you know, and I'm still doing great. I healed very quickly, painlessly, um, yeah, the only thing that was kind of crappy is they kept me in the hospital an extra day because they didn't deliver in the hospital. I delivered outside the hospital even though I was doing great. That was their words. But that is my birth story and I'm not going to go on any longer. So yeah, I will talk to you guys later and as I said, she's sleeping beside me. I'm not going to disturb her but you'll see her in some upcoming videos I'm sure and I'll be doing like an update on her real soon. So yeah, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.